to open your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 8. And I want to share briefly from the Word of God. Verse 1 through to 4. And again we thank God for the rain. It says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no man, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. So here we see after Jesus had finished with the Sermon on the Mount, that he came down from the mountain and a great multitudes of people followed him. Wherever Jesus went, he was always doing good. And the Bible says he was always healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Our God is a healer. And he is a good God. And he has not changed, not one bit. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he is the same forevermore. And if he healed in Bible times, then he will heal today. And he will continue to heal tomorrow. Because he said that he will take sickness from the midst of us. And the number of our days he will fulfill it. For he is the Lord, our healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. And the word of God says, as the great multitudes followed him, there came a leper to him. And this leper fell down before him and worshipped him. I don't know how many of you know about the lepers in the Bible. But there were certain laws and regulations and requirements for lepers. They were not allowed to mingle with society. Most of the time, lepers live an isolated life. A life of loneliness. A life apart from their friends. Apart from their family. Apart from society because when you were a leper, you were considered unclean. And priests and the ministers of God were not even allowed to associate with lepers. More or less touch them. And today, we may not have the disease of leprosy. But we probably have a lot of people who feel as lepers. They feel isolated. They feel lonely. They feel as though that they are outcast in society and they are always separating themselves from everybody else because they feel rejected. And rejection is, is such a terrible thing. If people don't know how to handle rejection, they can even go into depression and some of them might even become suicidal. So this man who was walking a lonely path and he was accustomed to being rejected. He was accustomed to when people saw him, they would scamper out of the way. Because it was required of a leper when he walked, you know, into society that he was supposed to ring a bell and announce himself and declare leper, leper, leper is coming. And then women would grab their children and, and they would scamper out of the way. Everybody would clear the path because a leper is somebody you don't want to have anything to do with. And then this man, he came up to Jesus. And he said, Lord, I know that you can make me clean. 
But he said, if you are willing, please clean me. Please heal me. He knew that Jesus had the power to change his life, to bring healing and deliverance to him. He probably heard and he probably saw many of the miracles that Jesus had performed. But one of the uncertainty that he had in his mind was all that Jesus had the power to heal. Was Jesus willing to heal him? You know, when you think a little of yourself and you suffer from inferiority complex and you've been rejected all your life and you know that people doesn't really care about you. Maybe because of the family you came from, your family background or history. Maybe it's because of your ethnicity. Probably it's because of your social status. Maybe probably it's because you have done things that were wrong in the past. But let me tell you, at the arms of Jesus, there's always room for you and me. No matter what you have done, no matter how ostracized you may feel, no matter how isolated you may be, no matter how much rejection you have faced, there is always room at the cross for you. And Jesus said, him that comes to me, I will in no wise turn him away. Amen. We were supposed to have church at half capacity. We didn't know really how to do it. But I said, God, whoever wants to come, let them come. Because Jesus would never turn away somebody who wants to come and worship him, who wants to come and serve him. There's always room for each and every one at the cross. Amen. And Jesus answered that man's question in no uncertain way. Jesus made it very plain to him. Listen, I am willing. I died to save you. I shed my blood to redeem you. The word of God says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Jesus will love us more than anybody else. He loved us more than our parents, more than our spouse, more than our soulmate, whoever it may be. Jesus is the greatest lover and he cares about each and every one of us. And you know, Jesus did something that was ceremonially unclean. The Bible says he reached out his hand and he touched the man. When you were not supposed to touch a leper, Jesus touched him. And immediately he was cleansed from his leprosy. You know, today we are being told that we need to isolate ourselves from each other. That we need to be scared of each other. That we shouldn't hug and we shouldn't shake hands. And we shouldn't make any personal contact with any person. But let me tell you, God is not a God that is afar off. He's an intimate God. The Bible says even though he sits high, yet he looks low and he dwells with those that be of a broken heart and of a contrite spirit. Amen. God is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, where nobody cares, where nobody understands, where nobody thinks are taught about us. And we see that this is happening in society today. God cares deeply about each and every one and he wants to touch us there is power in a touch there is a there is power release when that nail scan hand lays his hands upon you then you are changed you are transformed you are healed you are delivered because the Bible says his hand is not short that he cannot reach you nor is his ear heavy that he cannot hear you he is willing to touch you even when the doctor can't touch. He is willing to come into your life and to change and to transform you even when the medication cannot help you. Yes. Yes. Amen. In the book by Gary Chapman, The Five Love Languages, Gary Chapman 
who has helped thousands and even millions of people said, a touch is very important. One of the ways that we express our love and our affection to each other is by touching one another. And I want you to know that a touch is very important. A touch can help relieve depression. A touch can heal your soul. It can calm your mind. It can reassure you. It can reaffirm you. There is a miracle in a touch. And I'm talking about just a natural person who cares about you touch, touching you. If someone speaks to you and they lay their hands on you while they speak to you, that is therapeutic. But you're petty. <laughs> Will the scholars help me? Whatever. <laughs> Praise God. But Jesus reached out and he touched this man. And the Bible says immediately he was cleansed from his leprosy. Amen. Amen. Yes. Every leprosy in your life has to leave. Every demon has to depart. Yes. Amen. Because he is a Jesus. Amen. Who can cure the incurable. He is a Jesus who can work the impossible. He has created you and I. Yes. And he has come down to touch us. He broke the ceremonial laws of Moses. Because the ceremonial laws of Moses says you should touch a leper. But let me tell you there is no barrier. There is no wall. There is no partition that is going to separate us from the love of God. Jesus Christ is going to break down every religious barrier. He's going to break down every social barrier. Every religious and every legal barrier. Just to get to you and to me. To heal and to deliver us. Because he hears the, the cry of our heart. And of our soul. And of our spirit. We know that God wants sacrifice. Yes, he doesn't want blood sacrifice or animal sacrifice. But he wants a sacrifice of praise. And a sacrifice means that when you give up something of value for something other than that, that you deem to be more important or more valuable, Let me tell you, Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for you and I. Amen. He shed his blood. The Bible says he himself took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. He didn't lay it upon an angel. He didn't lay it upon anybody else but on himself. He took our sins. He took our iniquity. He took our pains, our griefs, our sorrows. He took it all upon himself so that we can be delivered. We can be set free. We can be healed. What a loving Jesus we have. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. There's nobody that can block your blessing. I don't care how much witchcraft they do against you. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Yesterday was the 31st of October. It was the day in the 16th century when Martin Luther nailed it. I mean he literally nailed. You know his pointers on the walls or the door of some building because he was doing penance. And he was trying to reach God his way by self-effort. And when he read the Bible, he recognized that it says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 that the just shall live by faith. Amen. And he said, listen, it's not of works. It's not by my self-effort. It's not by my religious rituals or formality or ceremonies. But it's by what Jesus Christ has done. This is the work of God, Jesus said, that you might believe on him who had sent me. And if we believe in Jesus, it brings a transformation in our life. We begin to look at things differently. We begin to see the impossibility as possible. We begin to see things from a different perspective because we are seeing it from the eyes of Almighty God, a compassionate, loving Heavenly Father. 
You know how wonderful it was to know that you will live in this life of rejection and pain and, re and, and suffering and sickness for so many years. And finally, somebody cared about you so much to reach down and to touch you and to heal you. I know we didn't come to church today to be touched by others. Because clearly there are social distancing guidelines. And we came here to be touched by the master. Anybody wants to hug me, they are free to. You'll get some sweat on you, but that's okay. You want to shake my hand, I'm not going to push you away. You want to make contact with me and give me what you got, I'm going to take it. Once it's the right stuff. But more than that, I want to give you what I got. I've got resurrection power flowing through me. I've got the risen Christ from the crumb of my head to the soles of my feet. The Bible says if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that dwells in you is going to quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Jesus is the greatest lover. He always cared for the rejected. You remember the woman at the well? This woman came to fetch water at noon. You know why? She was not a late sleeper. But she didn't come in the early hours of the morning or the late hours of the evening because that was the time when other women came. And she probably had stolen some of their husband in the past. And maybe they would have hold her drunk her in that well. But she came at lunchtime and Jesus reached out to her and when he touched her, he ministered to her. The Bible says she left her old water pot and she went into the city and said, Come and see a man that told me everything that I ever did. Is this not the Christ? Amen. When you reach Jesus, you reach the crossroads in life. You have to make a decision now whether you're going to follow him, whether you're going to listen to his voice, whether you will accept him as your shepherd. Whether you will become a sheep of his pasture or whether you will reject him. Jesus said, don't tell anybody about what I did for you. He said, but go and show yourself to the priest and, and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded as a testimony for them. Because the priest back then was the only one who can declare him as being clean. When Jesus does a job, he does a thorough job. Amen. You can go back and take all the x-rays, all the um, MRI, is it MIR? Or oh, MIR? Huh? Yeah, some of these, these cans. You can go back and take all the blood tests and verify what Jesus has done for you because Jesus does a thorough job. He does a complete job. When he heals you, he heals you totally and completely. And when this man, you know, was healed, he was told to go back and show himself to the priest. Let the priest do what he needs to do and declare that, listen, you are totally healed. Now you are fit to return back to society. If people got this coronavirus, you know you can't tell everybody. Because people don't want to shake your hand, they won't, don't want to be close to you. They treat you like a leper. But let me tell you, Jesus will never treat you like a leper. Amen. I don't care if you've got AIDS. I don't care if you're homophobia. Jesus cares about every person. He loves every single human being. There's no body that you can ever come in, in contact with that Jesus does not care about. If he would heal lepers, if he would forgive prostitutes, if he would hang out with drunkards and, and, and people who were gamblers and, and people who had a reputation with vain people, then surely God can do something to deliver you and to help you. All you need to do is to cry out to him like this leper did. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus is saying, I am willing to be clean. I want us to pray today. Hallelujah. As we close our eyes, think about what the Lord has done for this man. The great compassion he had on him. 
And take about the words of Christ, him that comes to me, I will in no wise turn him away. Jesus is there with open arms, waiting to welcome you, to receive you, and to do for you what nobody else can. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful Savior to me. Hallelujah. He brought me out of the mary clay and set my feet upon the rock and established my going. He has put a new song in my mouth, even praise to our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Today I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Repent of all the wrong things that you have done. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Let the Lord Jesus wash you with his blood. Let him cleanse you today and accept him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. But he's calling you to come unto him. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet, church, as we give glory and praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll ask Priscilla to come back and let's sing this song, He Touched Me. He touched me and all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. Now I know Jesus touched me and made me whole. Hallelujah. He touched me. Oh, he touched me.
trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but trust and obey Him. Glory be to God. All you need is faith to believe in the Son of God. To believe that God is right there by your side. And He can touch you. He can minister to you. He can remove those pains from your body. He can remove the loneliness from your heart. You can feel His presence as you welcome Him into your life right now. Hallelujah. God, I know that you are with us. I know that your presence is among us, God. Let your glory fall, oh God. Let your power come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 